In section 4.1, you will graph quadratic functions in standard form. In our first example, we're going to graph the parent function, or the most basic quadratic function, y equals x squared. All other quadratic functions are usually compared to this parent function. To graph it, we're going to make a table of values, and in that table of values, the first point we're going to find is the vertex. The vertex is either the low point or the high point for the U-shape, and the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Our quadratic equation is always of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So for this parent function, our b value is 0. There's no x term, so 0 is multiplied to x. And our a value is multiplied to x squared. Our a value is positive 1. So we have negative 0 over 2 times 1. And 0 divided by 2 is 0. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 0. And now when I put 0 in for x into the equation, 0 squared is 0. So I get a y-coordinate of the vertex of 0 also. So the origin is the vertex of this parent function, this u-shape. And now to determine how wide to draw my u-shape, I'm going to choose values for x on either side of my vertex. So I'll choose negative 2 and 2. When I substitute negative 2 in for x, negative 2 squared is 4. When I substitute 2 in for x, 2 squared is also 4. So I'm graphing negative 2, 4 in the second quadrant, and positive 2, 4 in the first quadrant. And then I'll draw my u-shape through those three points. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides this u-shape into two equal pieces, and it travels through the vertex. So the equation for this axis of symmetry is x equals 0. It's a vertical line that crosses the x-axis at 0. In our second example, we're going to graph y equals negative 1 half x squared. Now I know that this parabola is opening down because my a value is negative. My a value is negative 1 half. Okay. And I'm going to make a table of values. In that table of values, again, I'm going to find the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And for this parabola, my b value is 0. My a value is negative 1 half. And simplifying, I get 0 divided by negative 1, or 0. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 0. And when I put 0 in for x, 0 squared is 0. 0 times negative 1 half is 0. I get a y-coordinate of 0 also. So the origin, again, is the vertex for this u-shape that's opening down. And I wanted, want to determine how wide to draw it. So again, I'll choose two, negative 2 and 2. Um, equally spaced on either side of the vertex. When I put negative 2 in for x, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. When I put 2 in for x into my equation, 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 half times 4 again is negative 2. So since I chose those x coordinates equally spaced about my vertex, I'm finding uh, y values that are the same. Negative 2, negative 2 is in the third quadrant and positive 2, negative 2 is in the fourth quadrant. So I'm drawing a v-shape, uh, a u-shape that's opening down. It has an axis of symmetry that travels through that vertex again. An axis of symmetry of x equals 0. Comparing this um, parabola to the parent function, um, they have the same vertex. The origin is the vertex of both. But this parabola opens down, which means it's a reflection of the parent function. Okay, and also because the absolute value of a, or the absolute value of negative 1 half is 1 half, 
which is less than 1, we know that this parabola is wider than the parent function and we call it a shrink of the parent function. Okay, in this example we're going to graph g of x and g of x is equal to negative x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay, my a value for this function is negative 1, so I know that this parabola is opening down. My b value is negative 2 and my c value is negative 1. So in my table of values, I'm going to put that vertex first. And the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And substituting in negative 2 for b and negative 1 for a, I get positive 2 divided by negative 2 which is negative 1. I have an x coordinate of negative 1 and now I'll substitute that into the equation for x and I'll solve for g of x or y. So simplifying I get negative 1 squared which is 1 so the first term is negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 minus 1, so I'm getting a value of 0 for y. So I'll graph negative 1, 0 on the x-axis, and then I'll choose points, again, equally spaced on either side of that vertex, so I'm going to put negative 3 and positive 1 in for x and find y. So now I'm substituting in negative 3 for x, So I get negative 3 squared, which is 9, so I have negative 9. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, minus 1. So it looks like negative 10 plus 6, or negative 4, for a y value. And I'll solve for y when x is positive 1. Positive 1 squared is 1, so I have negative 1 for a first term, negative 2 for a second term, minus 1. So that is a total of negative 4. So I can graph the ordered pairs negative 3, negative 4, and positive 1, negative 4, and I can draw this parabola that's opening down. The axis of symmetry, again, is this vertical line that divides the parabola into two equal pieces and it passes through the vertex. The equation that names the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. Comparing this parabola to the parent function, it's a reflection, again, because it's opening down instead of up. The vertex is not the same we say that this is a translation left one unit of the parent function. In our last example we're going to find the minimum or maximum value of f of x and f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. We know that this parabola since it has a positive a value is opening up and the vertex is going to be a, a low point for this parabola, which means this parabola is going to have a, a minimum value. If that vertex was a high point for a parabola opening downward, then we would say that the function has a maximum value. Okay, the minimum value for this function is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So all we have to do to find that minimum value is find the vertex and we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a, so we'll find that first. Our b value is 8, and our a value is 2, so we have negative 8 divided by 4, or negative 2, for an x-coordinate of the vertex, and we need to find y, or f of negative 2, so we'll substitute in negative 2 for x, and simplify.
Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16 plus 7. So it looks like 15 minus 16, or negative 1, is our y value, or our y coordinate of the vertex, which means the minimum value for f of x is negative 1. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2, 4, and 7 on pages 237 and 239 of your textbook.